Time to discuss offense. When a neutral really can be a bit of a challenge. Due to the aforementioned short range, you're not going to be hitting the opponent at round start with just her normals. That said, you will want to get as close to your opponent as possible, then start using block strings with highs and lows mixed in to break their guard. A good pressure starter is a low hitting 2A. You can use the momentum from the dash to give it more range, and if it hits, do a combo. If it's blocked, however, you will want to lead into a close B. Then you can mix in an overhead or another low using 214B or 214C respectively. If you really want to, you can extend pressure further and don't have to start the high-low attempt that early. Just keep in mind that most opponents will be getting uneasy by this point and either start mashing vanishing guard or using a counter raid to get you off of them. This can be used to your advantage, however. Remember what I said earlier about the universal concepts of offense? Use those to your advantage. If the opponent is too liberal at their use of shields, punish them for it. Start using stacker pressure. Only use one or two attacks on block, then get your throw combo ready, since they won't be able to break your throw while they are using Vanishing Guard. Alternatively, you can just use whatever type of attack that they can't block at the moment. If you notice that they're doing a high Vanishing Guard, dash in with a two-way to start a combo. If they're doing a low Vanishing Guard, start a combo with 2 one 4 b Many people love to abuse Vanishing Guard, and this is how you either force them to stop doing it, or kill them in the process of refusing to adapt to the situation. Once the opponent is conditioned to block low by default from the two-way starter pressure, you can start using 2 and 4 b and possibly even hop JC as combo starters. These overhead attacks are slower than 2A, of course, but the former can be cancelled into other things to make it safer on block, and the latter is plus on block to begin with. You can even start your block strings with dash up far B if you want to, given that this will likely lead to opponents getting ready to start using Vanishing Guard, which you can then bait and punish. It leads into the same high-low mentioned earlier anyway. When you're at round start, you can use 2 and 4 A if you think the opponent is going to run towards you, but this is a risky option. You may be better off using a dash up far B if you assume they're going to play defensively, a JD if you read projectile at round start, or use an instant air dash JC if you think they're going to jump. These are all just ideas, of course, and there are many more options, such as round start backwards IAD to bait the opponent into approaching you if they are also an offensive player. Once you've finally landed a combo and knocked the opponent down, you can begin your deadly Okizune. Most of the options I mentioned are already good for Okizune, such as Midi 2A, 214B, or Hop JC. But you can also do something like a Midi Throw, seeing as how the opponent may try using Wake Up Shield, like I mentioned in the defense section. The cross-up technique I mentioned earlier is also a potential option since most will not be expecting it to wake up. Of course, if you read the opponent using a reversal of some sort, you can bait it for a big punish. Remember that if you block the opponent's wake-up attack, they can still force their way in by canceling into a partner or blast, so it's ideal to make them with the attack instead of blocking. Though this also gives them more space to escape if your read is incorrect and they notice that you put yourself out of range of the reversal. There are many more setups that are possible after a knockdown, but there will be a section on that later. When you have the opponent in the corner, you're even more deadly since they have less space to attempt an escape. Your options don't really change here, you just get more damaging combos that take advantage of being in the corner. The general game plan is still to stay in the opponent's face and force aggression into knockdowns. Assist choice is another important factor. The partners you choose will shape how you play with the Rui. Partners cover a wide variety of functions in Nitro Plus Blasters, with some being as powerful as supers. Many can serve as your win condition. There is a degree of flexibility and choices here, obviously, but I highly recommend using Franco as one of your slots, as she offers several things that I think make an assist good. For one, she has a fast initial charge time. You don't have to wait the entire match to be able to use her. Second, she has a fast cooldown, so you can use her multiple times in one round. Third, her attack starts up quickly, so it can be used to cover approaches. Fourth, the actual attack itself is quite good, providing a fair amount of damage, but more importantly, good blocks done enough for you to get a high-low attempt while she's firing her revolver, not to mention a deadly setup that I'll explain later. With your second slot, you can basically use whatever, but my personal favorite is Yuki. She is considered a weaker assist since her herd of zombies can be hit by the opponent and the initial charge time is a bit high, but said herd still provides an overwhelming set play storm that you can use to your advantage. A bit of a knowledge check, but good after a knockdown. There are several setups and resets you can perform with this assist, both with and without Franco, but when starting out, all you really need to know is that you can call her after knocking the opponent down and start using high lows until the opponent finally cracks under pressure once the undead starts shambling towards them. If you prefer raw, guaranteed damage, then Dragon is a great choice. You can land a huge combo with her that will likely knock out the opponent or put them in a state close to it. The beam she fires comes at an angle, so you will have limited set play with it, but it's still better than nothing. If you want the set play of Yuki and the damage of Dragon, you can try Carol. 
Her charge time and startup are actually quite high, but once she's ready, you can almost guarantee a kill, or at least hit, using her, since the opponent will be forced into a disadvantageous position once the Swarm of Locusts takes flight. Still, the charge time on this partner is so slow, there's a realistic chance that you'll have either already won the battle, or have already been knocked out by the time that she is ready. If you prefer consistency and frequent partner use, then Honor is a good choice for your second slot. The damage is lower than something like Dragon, but her startup and charge time are much better than the other second slot choices I mentioned so far. Use her to continue your pressure or even OTG the opponent, then rely on your personal skill with Riri to get the rest of the job done. Once again, these are all just suggestions. There are several good options for partners with Riri, so you may benefit from experimenting and seeing what you personally prefer with her. Riri has a large variety of combos she can perform for various situations. So many, in fact, that I have an entire combo document for her, but for now, I'll just discuss the ones that you need to know. You have several starters, but the end goal of your mid-screen combo is to lead into far B, 5C, 236A, 214A, 214C. How you reach that ender depends on several factors. If you're close to the opponent, you can start off with 5A, but I personally prefer to use close B as my starter, as it leads to more damage since you can re-beat into 6A after close B. As such, I simply refer to the combo of close B, 6A, far B, 5C, 236A, 214A, 214C as 6A repeat. This works as both your bread and butter combo as well as your universal punish combo as well with DP. The other starter you can use is 2A. If the opponent fails to guard against lows, the other loop of 2A, close B, far B into the general recipe. This is ideally how you will score knockdowns, so you can then go into your various Okazeme setups. After you've pushed the opponent towards the edge of the battlefield, you'll need to know your corner route to get even more damage. You can use the same starters as your mid-screen combos, but the recipe after landing the initial hits is 236B, 214A, slightly delayed 214B, 6A, jump cancel, JC, double jump cancel, DJC, DJE. You can use this after both the JC in your throw combo, and the 5C in the ground chains. A notable new starter you get in the corner is 2E. After you've conditioned the opponent to not always block low on wake up, you can trip them up with 2E into 236B, then do the rest of the route I mentioned earlier. This does more damage than a simple 2A starter, and 236B is safe on block anyway. Another essential combo to know is your ground throw route. Due to the habit I mentioned earlier that many players have of using Vanishing Guard, you will get to do normal throws pretty often. The normal throw by itself is fine, but you can make it much more useful by 2D hop cancelling before the second hit. The most optimal universal throw combo is Ground Throw, 2D after the first hit of said ground throw, JC, Dash Up Close B, 6A, Jump Cancel, Jump B, Jump C, Double Jump Cancel, DJC, DJE. But the Dash Up Close B can be difficult to time online. As such, the more consistent throw combo to do is Ground Throw, 2D Cancel, JC, Far B, Jump Cancel, JB, JC, Double Jump Cancel, DJC, DJE. Other than lower damage, the notable downside to this combo is that it doesn't work on all characters. Against Homura, the best character in the game, and Oka, the worst character in the game, this will drop. So you instead have to use the route of Ground Throw, 2D Cancel, JC, 6A, Jump Cancel, JB, JC, Double Jump Cancel, DJC, DJE. The damage drop off isn't that high between these routes, but remember that every bit counts. Next, you will need to remember your anti-air combo, as people love to jump. If you see the opponent jumping towards you, use 6A, Jump Cancel, JB, JC, Double Jump Cancel, DJC, DJE to punish them for it. Remember how I mentioned you can start off combos with your 2 and 4B overhead earlier? The most simple meterless route with that is 2 and 4B, A, C. It provides a knockdown and does enough damage to force the opponent to not always just block low. There are even more damaging options that use your resources, but I'll talk more about that in a bit. Your jump in combo starter is JC, Far B, 5C. From here, you should have enough time to confirm if the opponent was standing or crouching when you initially hit them. If they were standing, just use your standing knockdown combo mentioned earlier. In general, however, if a jump in hit them, they are probably crouching, so it's safe to just go into a crouching route here. As such, use JC, Far B, 5C, 236C, Charge 5B, 5D Cancel after the wall bounce, 6A, Jump Cancel, JB, JC, Double Jump Cancel, DJC, DJE. If near the corner already, simply omit the 5D. This is what I alluded to earlier about Wake Up Vanishing Guard not being an infallible option, as you can get so much off of a simple Hop JC starter. Of course, this route is not universal. It will not work on a few characters, but I'll include more notes on that in the combo document. In general, 
you will want to go for Okizume over damage unless it will kill. Your Okizume Ender in the air is JE, while J623C is your damage Ender, which can be extended further with supers. You can end ground combos with 236AB or 623AB for more damage. If you use the former, the opponent is left in the air and can tech, so be sure to have something to cancel it with such as Franco to continue your combo and get a knockdown. The latter gives you a knockdown on its own, but said knockdown is worse than what you'd get from just using 214C. All of what I mentioned so far is fairly simple, but Rui Lee has an incredibly damaging option that can make any initial hit she scores very deadly. After a combo blast, she can perform a Tetsuzanko loop. Basically, the idea is that you input a 236B, then D cancel afterwards, as the blast state after a combo blast lets you cancel any attack with a D roll. After the root actually starts, it's generally a variation of close B, far B, 236B, 5D, repeat it three or more times into an ender of close B, 2C, jump cancel, JB, JC, double jump cancel, DJC, DJE, or possibly a metered option like 623AB, though a lot of this is determined by the screen position or the starter. An easy way to set it up is from a throw. Just dash up to the opponent, throw them, then combo blast. The full notation is ground throw, 2D cancel, JC, blast, 214B, 214A, the sequence of 5D, close B, far B, 236B repeat it three times, close B, far B, 623AB. This can be a bit difficult to time, so you also have the easier option of ground throw, blast cancel, the sequence of close B, far B, 236B, 5D repeat it three times, close B, far B, 623AB. Another thing worth noting is that you can sacrifice repetition in these Tetsuzanko loops in order to do your 623AB faster, then JD cancel it to get a much better knockdown, skipping the dizzy animation from 623AB altogether. This gives you time to set up a partner, do a charge 5B, etc. As I said earlier, you can do this for multiple starters, not just your normal throw. It can make your 214B attack more deadly, turn the command grab super into an even bigger threat, or be done from one of your regular starters for more damage. The best part is that this is all unburstable, so the opponent can't escape even if they still have their blast icon. There are many examples of this with slight variations, but they will be listed in the aforementioned combo document. Time to mention some setups. To start with a simple one, let's expand on something that I alluded to earlier. After a mid-screen knockdown, you can forward jump over the opponent's body, then do an air backdash into JC. This will counter opponents that just smash DP when they're waking up since you garbled their input after the forward jump. This is a bit slow, however, so there's a chance they'll notice you jumping into air backdash. Now, onto a very strong tactic that can dramatically increase your win rate. One of the most powerful things I've discovered with Rui Lee is that she can cancel the recovery frames of her 236AB with a partner or blast cancel. Not only does this make a block raw 236AB safe, but you also keep momentum from the kick. As such, you are now rushing towards the opponent at rapid speed in the air, while being covered by either an assist that extends your pressure, or at the very least, plus frames and the ability to roll cancel if you use your combo blast. I refer to this as the dive setup. Try using it during a normal block stream, such as after the opponent has successfully blocked your normal high-low mix-up. The partner it seems to work best with on its own is Franco, as she keeps the opponent locked down while you are launching towards them, and they are forced to respect her shots. From this, you can either start using JA multiple times for overhead attacks, or wait until you land and do an empty dive 2A low starter. Possibly even an empty dive overhead if you want to go even further. This doesn't always require Franco, of course, and can be done with your other assist, just typically with less immediate coverage or support. The good thing about this is that it sets up an empty dive throw much easier since the opponent won't be locked in blocks done, unlike when you use Franco. The opponent can counter the dive setup by using Counter Raid, but you can air Vanishing Guard to avoid being hit, and with Franco protecting you, they can't just air throw to counter this. A more common, simpler setup to really is to just reset the opponent mid-combo when using the 2 and 4 series. Remember how I mentioned the chain roots with that? Most opponents tend to block low by default, or simply don't pay attention when being hit with a combo, so you can take advantage of this. If you manage to hit the opponent with a combo starter and begin doing your BNB, once you get to the 214A in said combo, you have the options of using 214B instead of 214C here, or simply dashing up and throwing. Both carry a risk, of course, but it's something to keep in mind, as both will refresh scaling and give you a follow-up that rewards you with more damage than a simple 214C ender. Using the 214B reset, you can then combo in a 214C like normal and get your knot down or continue the combo with a super or assist. The downside is that the opponent can hit you during the startup of 214B and go back on the offensive if they notice, or simply block high and punish, since 214B is unsafe on normal block. Speaking of which, if they use a normal block instead of Vanishing Guard here, keep in mind that you can try to steal your turn back with a 214C frame trap. 
You can also cancel into a partner or combo blast to keep yourself at advantage and this generally works well against both normal block and vanishing guard. Using the dash up throw reset, you can then perform your standard throw combo. The downside is that the opponent can simply react and break the throw if they weren't matching vanishing guard here, but don't think that's the end of your offense. If you're willing to take another risk, having a throw broken is just another reset opportunity. Mid-screen, you are close enough to make contact with the opponent with 214A after a broken throw, or even far B if you think they will attempt to move forward and go on the offensive of themselves. You can also use a dive setup here, as you are close enough to make contact with standing characters and even a few crouching characters. In the corner, you get even more powerful options. The far B will definitely make contact at this range, so gambling on a slower 214A is no longer really needed. While the dive setup is still a good option here, if you really want to spend meter, you can even try using 2N4AB to command grab them. This moves you forward enough to grab them even if they sit still, and it has enough invincibility to catch them if they attempt an offensive maneuver on the ground. Needless to say, post throw tech setups are something that you should keep in mind even outside of the 2N4A reset situation that started this tangent. Something to note about both of these resets from 2N4A is that they lose to invincible reversals, so sometimes it's worth just holding down back after the 2N4A and waiting a second in an attempt to bait out the opponent's reversal if you think they're going to panic and use something like a DP or a variable rush. You can then punish their mistake with a full combo for big damage. Because of the multitude of options available for this setup, I use it pretty often and recommend incorporating it into your play if you think you're good at reading your opponent. Another useful setup that really has access to is a rewarding throw reset in the corner. When executing your corner BNB, you can end it early after the 6A, and instead of jumping into JC, you can just wait for a tech and grab the opponent, ending with a JD roll cancel and a JE for a knockdown. The weakness of this reset is that the opponent can tech forward to escape it, but you can also grab them from this position if you read the forward tech. Something important to remember is the opponent has enough time to jump away from the throw. If you read this, you can use an air dash to stay in the air long enough to catch them with an air throw once they start descending. One final notable setup I'll mention here is the OTG corner reset. After hitting the opponent with JE, you're close enough to execute a combo of close B, far B, something that will hit them while they're on the ground. This leads to either one of two things. Either they don't tech and you can then end the sequence with 236C for more damage, or they do tech and you can reset them again. Going for either a dash up 6A into an air combo if you think they won't vanishing guard, or an air throw into JD, JE if you think they will. Both of these can be countered by teching forward, but just like the other corner reset mentioned earlier, you can bait and punish this. If they choose a neutral or back tech, then jump instead. They've exhausted all their air options, and you can just wait for their descent to punish with a throw or 6A. For the record, this OTG reset works outside the corner as well, but it's not as reliable mid-screen as the opponent has more directions to escape in. You are free to try a dive setup to catch neutral and back techs. You can also use a late 236AB to catch forward techs, but that gives the opponent enough time to do something else, such as roll to avoid falling far enough to be hit by the attack. If you're feeling really confident, you can even use 623AB to catch forward techs. Well, that's the long and short of how you play Riwi. Get in, be aggressive, and don't forget to toss out some bait here and there so that you can get big punishes into more Okizume. I hope this guide answered at least a few questions for you. If there's anything you're curious about regarding the character, feel free to ask and I'll potentially make a follow-up video or answer you in the comments section.
全てへの2とプラスフリークに捧ぐ 2D 対戦格闘ニトブラがプレイステーション4に降りニトプラスブラースターズヒロインズインフィニットディエルエクサム。